Hello everybody, good afternoon and thanks for joining us for this twilight on what's being called All Things Google, but I've slightly adapted to think about some remote learning, what I'm just calling the tips and tricks. So things that we've learned from the first lockdown and then what's working over the past two weeks. So thanks so much for joining us. Right, before you freak out about the amount of tabs I've got open, let's get started then with this summary of ideas. So a huge thank you to everybody who gets in contact following my remote learning emails. Please keep that going. I don't, you know, just I'm not a mind reader. I don't know what's going on across the school and I don't know if there's any support, if there's anything in specific departments want. So I love hearing the feedback. Please keep that coming. Um, this is going to be online tools to support students and teachers. Thanks, Joe, to Team Geography there. We're having um, just a couple of short meets every week as we're collaborating and we're sharing out the workload and ideas. So this you're mostly going to see geography examples because that was easy for me to screenshot. But I'm going to mention some things happening as some other departments and please keep that information coming. So these are kind of six areas I would like to focus on really quickly and I'd like you to think about looking at tonight. Workload, feedback, the knowledge gap, a bit of metacognition, I guess, self-regulated, thinking about teaching our students how to organise um, their revision, how to organise their learning. Creativity, so big plugs coming up for TechFest and then collaborating, collaborating with colleagues and also with our students. So let's get started. We're reducing the workload. Mo, wow. I know lots of people were using it last time and I continue to using it over autumn and it is my absolute favourite thing. Thank you, Emily Dixon. You were the one who found it, first of all. It's brilliant. I had over 40 of you respond to me last week about how much you're loving it. Fantastic. And it came back from Year 10 Parents Evening. So they're obviously not just being played in students are, are liking it and responding, but they're letting their parents hear as well, which is fantastic. Then you've got the screencasting. So I'm using Loom right now. I know Screencastify is another popular one. But if you do something like this, so here instead of actually with my face, I've just got my email little avatar there, my little logo. And then I can make one that actually the whole department can use. So a lot of sharing going on. And you can see behind me, like we co-collaborate in geography on all our schemes of work and divide it up. So that's, you know, how technology can help us reduce the workload. This here is a big plug and thank you to Simon. So and team music there. Rubrics are essentially putting our level descriptors, our step descriptors, you know, kind of, I guess, effort descriptors online. So essentially you can just hit the number. So number four for exceptional. And they're going to get all that feedback automatically. So Simon, I sent the video out um, before Christmas. I'll put a link to it again. Just watch that if you would like to find out how to do that this afternoon. OK, on to feedback. Well, we've got, I guess, our traditional way of responding to Google Documents. You can see top right here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, I've highlighted an aspect. I'm popping in my comment of, you know, I actually want Haiti 20, 2010 mentioned there. Of course, we've got Moat again. Here, this example example is thanks to Joe and Team Geography here. So this is a model answer. So they've done their question. This was their model answer. And then you can see we've got some directed improvement tasks. So they work through the model answer and then they'll respond to theirs. And, and we have a lot of success in terms of students being able to to not only do this, but in terms of the uptake, you know, this is this is a task that students actually can, can follow through and complete independently. I will mention the visualizers. We're all doing it, you know, before lockdown. We take, you know, a piece of students' work or we've got something we printed off and we annotate all over it. And, you know, team maths, I know you were doing it with all your mathematical problems, but we can do that at home. So I've like grabbed mine and brought mine home. So I can literally, you know, I can draw out uh, Oxbow Lake and Meander and annotate it. Or, you know, I can actually like, I can model the struggle of live writing. Thank you, Penny. I've been doing that ever since you taught me those few years ago. So that essentially what we do at, at school we can still do at home so we can record that as a screencast which is brilliant and then this top left is thanks to Kelly here Doug Amov wrote an amazing book based on all the research from the first lockdown and what they saw from the asynchronous and synchronous lessons and his biggest piece of advice is when you're asynchronous like us when you're pre-recording and you're pre-making content and students are working through it on their own keep the personal relationships going keep that bit of feedback keep a little bit of collaboration and that community of the class going. So Kelly here has made a video based on her year eights on three lessons of work on Africa. 
So she's gone through almost like the what went well and the even better if. So she's given whole class feedback through a video. And then she just set the question to ask for this, you know, individual feedback. What are you proud of and what would you do to improve? Now, that's going to give Kelly some useful information in planning the next task. But it enables the students to see what each other was thinking and doing. And if you allow that function through a question for them to respond to each other, you've just engendered just a tiny little bit of, of classwork, a little bit of interactivity there. OK. Okay, finding the knowledge gaps. Top left, we've got the flipped learning. So I don't know if anyone remembers my well, Cavi, an ex-colleague. This was his big thing, flipped learning. So essentially, you get them to do something first of all. So it might be they watch a 10-minute clip and then they complete some Google, like, you know, quiz questions on it. They fill in a Google document, some slides. So it's just that basic foundation knowledge. You can see here, this was just the basic geography of India there. You've got that. Next up, I'd like to thank Emily Dixon here for making all the template knowledge organisers for geography. This is one that's been filled in by my um, one my 10B class. They're fantastic. When they did this last week, I quickly went through and I looked for the common gaps. So I looked to see what bit actually hadn't they filled in very well. And then that enabled me in the following lesson to do some feed forward. You know, thanks for everything, but I noticed this. Let's go over it now. And then one of the tasks was to go back in and then to add to their knowledge organizers. And then here I've just grabbed an example from math. So oh, thank you for this. This is the Google quizzes. One of the things I was asking, you know, I wasn't just giving some feedback in the year 10 parents evening. I was asking them. You know, what is it that you're liking? What do you want me to do more of? And Google Forms and Google Quizzes came back because they said they're getting immediate feedback. So with the Google Forms or quizzes, if they get the answer incorrect or correct, as you know, you can put in a web link. So you could put in, you know, you didn't quite get it right. Have a little look at this and or you could get a, a YouTube clip. Watch this instead and make sure you now, you know, have got this knowledge of the correct answer and then they can see what they've got right or wrong. And also for us, it's amazing. You click on responses and you see all those bar graphs so it can pick out some areas perhaps that you might need to go over and make a screencast for or sort out some Google Slides for next time. So that's incredibly useful. Then on to like metacognition, self-regulation, you've got the idea of the call now note taking method. So that fits in actually to a lot of the ideas about actually around the, the book, make it stick. Essentially, it's about almost dividing taking notes into three aspects, almost key keywords and things on the left hand side, the main notes of the lessons in the middle and then at the bottom having a summary. So trying to reduce essentially the lesson to three or four main bullet points. Podcasting, I know I've plugged this loads last term. There's an amazing free app called Anchor. iOS and Android, doesn't matter, it's free. You literally record into your phone and you've got an audio file to share or it allows you to publish directly to Spotify and to Apple Podcasts and then you can ask your students to subscribe. But I was just blown away in the first lockdown when I was doing it because they were sharing devices. So quite a lot of my students, GCSE students, although they had Chromebooks, little sister was having to borrow their Chromebook because mum and dad were, you know, were using theirs, their own for work they'd normally lend the younger child and I thought you know they've all got mobile phones we've got I think it's 98 percent it might even be higher correct me if I'm wrong Matt um of our students have got mobile phones so how easy they could just listen they could listen to your direct instruction they could listen to you just going through like you know a key idea and they could have that on their phone so that's a thought the wonderful T.A. Smith and I've made how to podcast so we made tutorials I shared those in 2020 so I'll make sure I pop a link on with this and like with Simon Legg's rubric tutorial. So perhaps you could look at that in a moment. Thank you to Beth and Sophie. This is sharing um, RE's revision booklets, the bespoke revision materials that they make and they work through with their students. And I know lots of departments, you have these. Perhaps screen recording and supporting, you know, showing students how to use that. You know, how do they actually use a revision guide? So think about that. And then this bottom bit, I teach the um, Year 11 Apollo 2 group and one of them got in contact with me like, you know, just a bit disheartened. I can't do it. I don't know what to do. So I popped the question, the work that they had to do in a Google Doc, uploaded it and said, just go. So did a quick little 20 second screencast. Just go to voice typing and then type me your responses. What are your opinions? Let's just see what you're thinking, because in geography, they have to come down kind of on a the side. They see both sides of a problem, but they've actually got to have a conclusion. We need to get them to evaluate. So it's like, just 
just put your thinking down. They did that. I then did a moat comment back, you know, or sit, and what about this? They did a bit more. So in the space of just a bit of back and forth, which probably took me about 10 minutes and probably actually only really the same for them, but I had a really good quality answer and they felt successful. So I'm in no way saying, I'm not saying this is replacing the pen. I know our students have to write exams and who knows whatever the government's going to come up with for mini tests for year 11. But for a lot that are disengaged and for those of our learners who struggle, let's keep them going. Let's actually get them doing some work, feeling that they can be successful and trying to awaken some of these ideas. Do consider this this voice typing function. OK, big plug for Tech Fest and creativity. In fact, the top two there, top left and the top middle are winning entries from last year. You may think this lends itself to obviously art and photography and media and digital graphics and things, but actually consider it for your subject. That one on the right, the water aid infographic, you know, all our subjects, we could ask our students to do a task like that. So consider this choice of outputs. Now, there are so many free extensions and websites. There are things like Photo P, P E A, amazing. Canva, and I know lots of students already use it. We've got things like Adobe Spark, fantastic. But I also want to kind of plug up video making. You know, in 2007, we started Wilden TV and we were having hundreds of videos being made by students. And that's tailored off. And I completely understand. They're more interested in things like, you know, games and graphics design, website design. And I know that technology has moved forward. But what about suggesting they make a little video? You know, they have got most of them like you know, it's, I think we're about 70, 75 percent with iOS phones. So with um, Apple. So perhaps you could ask them to use clips on it. You know, there are free filmmaking apps and they could make you an advert about something or equally, you know, on their Chromebooks or, you know, whatever device they've got at home. There are amazing sites like Wii Video, completely free where they could edit their own. So just consider giving them a choice of output. It doesn't always have to be a Google Doc or Google Slides. In fact, that was one of the things that my year 10s was saying that they noticed that everybody at the moment in all their subjects, it's all Google Slides, Google Slides, Google Docs. We might need to think about that moving forward these next kind of couple of weeks before half term. Right. And then collaboration. So I've mentioned like, how you know, the department meets, getting together and sharing out the workload. I do want to have a big plug for Jamboard. So this is thanks to English. So many of you in lockdown one got in contact with how you were using it. It's great collaboration for us. So you can see this is some ideas of some um, colleagues here. Thank you. And at some other schools who are coming up with some ideas of bits and pieces. But we can use it with our youngsters as well. So you can get them doing some group work on it. You could assign them a page of a Jamboard board because they don't just add stickies on and images on they can draw arrows they can connect to other ideas they could be like oh, i agree with kate about so and so so another big plug for jamboard and that was shared teo made a tutorial that was shared last week so perhaps that's your idea to have a little look at um before I finish off and tell you then what's next in this twilight what to do a little bit of advice from Pam Yale and I from Pamela and I about these face-to-face -face, um, touch-based sessions via me. We did some of these with the Googlers, so with students like Isaac and Teo, so with our year 11s and our year 10s now. We did some of these last year to get their feedback. And although we'd gone through all the protocols and you know I'd spoken to the parents and explained, actually we did still have to remind them of their explanations. Um, this is a bit awkward. I don't think you're properly dressed, pajamas. Um, can you can can you sort that out for me? Can you you know go away and come back again? So do think about that. I would suggest you have a couple of plan questions. So this is a touch base. This is just a checking in. This is not a lesson, but maybe you actually want a little bit of feedback from it. So maybe you actually want to know. You know, you, you mark some work last week and you know half of them didn't actually do as, as well as you thought so you want to say what did you actually think of that stuff on Wednesday's lesson or you know what do you want more of what do you like so you might just want to have one or two things this is a bit of an opportunity to not just see how they're doing and check in but to get some feedback so do think about it and the other thing is about cold calling we were doing it so we were saying you know what's your favorite like what's your favorite bit of online work you've done and warn in advance you know i'm going to come to you teo and isaac first and then grace i'm coming to you and and just it just gives them they need that thinking time and to be ready to speak because it might be a little bit daunting for some of them so do consider that <laughs>
Right, what now? Other than um, this bad meme, apologies for that. Well, what now is it's over to you to try one of these ideas. So whether you want to, you know, have a go of a jam board, you want to try your own um, audio podcast, you want to look at rubrics or whatever, you want to make some specific screencasts. This is time for you now to do that, to do something, to try something new, to slightly adapt your offering so far with one of your classes for this week. And also 3.45 to 4.50 now I'm going to be available on a um, meet with some other colleagues who are joining me like Jazz and Pamela thank you Matt it's going to be absolutely wonderful to have you there but come and join us is there a question is there something you're unsure at is there something that's like stopping you from doing what you want to do with your students for remote learning we're here to help answer questions and like you know is it something you want to share you've got this great idea you know okay I think we could do this better uh, I'm you know this is my guess this is my life but I don't know everything that's for sure I'm learning as much as anybody else is learning so I'd love to hear any feed forward stuff for us about what we could share across the school so please 345 to 415 the meet light link has been sent out click on it and join us it'd be amazing to have you there and so then a subliminal plug for Tech Fest and a quote that I like. It's not about the technology. It's not about a blooming Chromebook. It's not about Google Classroom. It's about what we're doing with it, what we're doing to try to help a little bit of knowledge acquisition and to support some engagement and some um, task completion. And then thank you, a huge thank you. As you know, we're an ed tech demonstrator school. So when I'm not making things like this, I'm on meets with schools around the country. So from the South Coast, Birmingham, et cetera, all the way up to Newcastle. So the things that we We've been doing I've been sharing with them so I do appreciate any further ideas so get in touch stay safe and just take care everybody I hope to see you on a rotor soon or I hope to be back again with some more help bye for now